This bus is just coming in for its yearly routine maintenance and checkup. Hopefully we won't find anything out of the normal. We've seen this bus the last two years in a row, so this is the third time it's been here, I think. bus is smoking a little more than normal on acceleration so when you get ready to go up the hill here he's gonna floor it and we'll see how much smoke comes out of it I'm gonna keep an eye on the boost as it goes up the hill and see if we got some kind of an engine issue Definitely low on boost. You never got about 12 on that gauge up there. These batteries at all? Pardon me? Have you replaced any batteries at all? I have not. Because right right now, so it might be your van or equalizer that's doing something wrong too, because your, your battery voltage for the ECM right now is only 12.1 volts. That's definitely low. Okay, uh, take the throttle pedal and step it all the way to the floor. And just hold yep. it. Yep, that's 100%. Bring it up about halfway. And just hold it there. So that's 56%. Go all the way again. That's 100%. Let it up just a little bit. 94, 93. And come all the way off of it. Touch it just a little. That's 9%, 10%. Yeah, it's working fine. You'll never get full boost if you're not getting full fuel. So that's why we wanted to confirm that the throttle position sensor was going to full fuel. This thing is definitely a little hard to spin. It should, it should spin much more freely than what it is. Uh, it's got a lot of resistance to it. There's also a lot of play, a lot of wobble in it. it. It shouldn't have that much play. We've been hiding this little monkey in our videos. So the last video, the bus rescue we did, he's in there. If you find him, just something fun for you. He'll be hidden in this video somewhere too. So just give you something to keep an eye out for if you want to do that. These steer tires have horrible wear on them. Uh, normally I think that's might be like a bad shock like that uh, or mechanical wear. We check the alignment. The alignment is right on the money. So it's not an alignment issue, but they're both wearing very weird. Um, inside outside just very weird wear pattern but it turns out that everything's overweight and the tires are under inflated as well it's hard to say what's causing that wear on the tire if it was just alignment which we checked it again and it was totally right on the money um you wouldn't see it like this i normally think bad shock when i see it like skipping like that but uh, we're going to stiffen up the shocks this has adjustable shocks on it we may end up adding a second shock to it um we'll, We'll see, we're gonna keep an eye on it, but this is not a safe tire to keep running anyways, plus it's overloaded on weight. So these tires, they're only uh, made in 41st week of 2021, so they're nowhere near aging out, but they're wearing terribly. But the problem here, if I zoom in on this here, is the max weight rating for this tire. So the max load for a single tire is 7,390 pounds, and he's like, 
14,500 on his front axle. So he is right at the very max there. He's also only been running 115 PSI in it. And at that max load like that, they should be at 120, but that's not, I mean, it's riding right at its max 100% of the time. Uh, and that's not safe for that tire. These are the 12R 22.5s. Upside down there for you, but you can read it there. And these are eight and a quarter inch rims. We're going to go with a 31580, which is going to handle about 2,000 pounds more weight per tire, but we can't put a 31580 on an uh, eight and a quarter inch rim. So we got to get some nine inch bud aluminum rims for them. You have the weights or just the. Yeah, the front axle is a 13,000 pound axle. Well, and we're running 14. Four on it? Is that what you were? Something, yeah, pretty close to that. Fourteen five. Yeah. So that's why you were getting the one fifteen for it, the twelve R twenty five, but they no longer recommend that. Well, he's severely overweight on the front axle. You know, it's only a 13,000 pound axle and he's running 14, over four, well over 14,000 pounds on it. His wife wasn't in the bus with him too when he had that done. Um, we're gonna talk about some ways we can lose some weight and a little bit on the bus, but he's also over the total gross vehicle weight of the, of the vehicle as well. Uh, and that's a concern. So we got lots of things to address. Look at these airbags in the front. These are the front airbags. I know this is from overweight too, that these bags are bouncing around like that. But look at how the airbags are splitting apart. Yeah, this does not look safe at all. I mean, could you imagine this front airbag blowing out on an already overweight axle going down the highway? Uh, the tires are at their maximum load and everything. That a blowout, that could be just catastrophic. significantly <clears throat> sliced open. So when he bought the bus, he got it from another guy who it was told it had new airbags on it when he got it. Yep. <laughs> and we knew these <laughs> looked really bad. The date code on them is from 2008 right there. It's amazing how long airbags can be on a bus and people still consider them new. <laughs> you want an extra set of hands, Jonathan, or no? Can George hold it back? I'm behind you. Hang on, I can clear it. Which way do you need to go? With this end. A little bit there. Oh, there we go. Whoa, 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 whoa. You caught? Yep, I'm caught. Perfect. Perfect. You got it? Yep. Back inside first, side. first and then. That's some of the dry rotting and splitting happening on the airbag there. So it's a good thing we're replacing those. We took those conies off. They're in good shape. They work good. They're adjustable. We went ahead and adjusted them stiffer. Um, this bus actually has an option where it could have come with another set of shocks. So there's another shock mount there and another shock there. Yeah, we set those to a little stiffer and we'll make sure keep an eye on the tire wear. This is the other front airbag. You can see how it's all dry riding and coming apart too. And again, remember this is riding around and it's overweight on the front axle, but look at the inside of this thing. Yeah, that's just splitting apart.
You don't want that going 70 miles an hour. You don't want to be in it, but be next to it on the highway. All right, so we're waiting for the new turbo to come in. But, uh, the air filter looks nice and clean. He just replaced that. We've got the new O-ring that's going to go on here. Everything else looks real healthy up here. Hoses look good and everything. So get the new turbo mounted on here and get it ready to go. Hopefully we'll have it running today. We're going to fix up where we had the exhaust leaks. We're going to clean up these flanges just a little bit. That should help as well. <laughs> All right, so we talked about things we can do to save some weight here. One is he's got a lot of tools in these drawers here, and we're going to try and weed them out a little bit and move some of them to the truck or... <laughs> Somewhere. Save Every little bit's going to help. And then this giant cover, it's just there for aesthetics to make it look pretty when you open the bay door. But that's just extra weight that don't need to be there. I mean... There's nothing wrong with just leaving your storage, you know, your batteries and stuff accessible there. We got a few gallons of oil that you carry around there, but you do have a gentleman's oiler, so we can keep that full. And then, I mean, 10 pounds, 20, you know, 20 pounds here, 50 pounds there, 40 pounds, 40, what do you think that weighs? Yeah, 30 or 40. Yeah, <laughs> it's not light. It's lighter than it looks, but it's still heavy. <laughs> and then in the next bay, not much we can do on this not side, because we've got some, electric bikes in there. And that's really the only convenient place to put them. Other than he could get a, a bike rack for his toad and put them on there, but then you can't ever open the tailgate of your truck. Do you get in the tailgate at all though, or? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's already full. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and then the, there's a big slide out that these are on, but that slide out, you know, you know, well, does it really make getting the bikes easier? In oh yes, absolutely. Okay. We found that if the bikes aren't convenient, we end up not using them, we just carry them. So. Yeah, okay. And then over on the other side. In this compartment. Uh, we have we have this tool here for taking off the lug nuts and stuff, but he's never going to use that tool. I think probably weighs 20 pounds. We have this hydraulic bottle jack up here. I don't think he's ever really going to use that, or he doesn't definitely need it in front of the wheels here. I have another air compressor so I can get rid of that hose. Not much, but it adds up. It, yeah, well, it, every little bit's going to help, but, you know, if we can take another 50 pounds out of there, we're we're getting there. This bay, that's just the generator. Yep. Nothing we can do there. <laughs> do you have anything else stored in there with the generator or no? No. Okay. And then we looked over here. He's got this metal slide out that's not very deep. It's really just as convenient to have a milk crate or two sitting there. So we can free up another 50, 60 pounds not having that slide out in there. And then he's carrying extra chemicals you know, there's a gallon that's seven pounds of that's like a waterless wash stuff for the bus but you never you never use it you've been carrying that same bottle for yeah i only use it at the house so. <laughs> yeah so we'll keep anything that you could use you only use while the bus is at the house why carry it around all the time and some of these other toolboxes and totes you might be able to go through and weed out even if you get one or two things out of each one it's going to help us lighten lighten the load a little and then when you're fueling it up don't top it off 100%, or if it does click, stop right then. Don't don't squeeze any more in the tank. Uh, we talked about carrying less water in his gray water, but they do a lot of boondocking, or in his fresh water, but he said they do a lot of boondocking. So we talked about, well, he could get a bladder for the bed of his pickup truck, a bladder tank, or an extra fresh water tank for the pickup, and then they could transfer that into the bus so they could carry, you know, instead of, what is it, 100, 200 gallons? What do you... Uh, the tank is 180 or 120 for water. For fresh water, yeah. So if you only carry 50 in the tank and then carry another 50 in the truck or whatever, that would save you a lot of weight too. Yeah. And then try to keep the fuel down. It's like eight pounds per gallon for water. Yeah. And then uh, inside the bus, just go through your cabinets and your different things and 
try and lighten the load a little. Find, find things that you haven't touched or used or you're not, you know, if they're seasonal things, don't carry summer stuff in the winter and winter in the summer. Or Do you really travel in the winter? <laughs> yeah. Oh you, do? oh, you go south? Okay, yeah. <laughs> so then you're going to the summer somewhere else, so. Well, we were able to get this brand new turbo from Garrett uh, for about $2,000 less than what we were coded for a reman one that we would have had to give the core back on. Uh, we would have had to pay a $2,500 core charge too that we would have got back, but uh, happy to use diesel pro power. Uh, we were able to get this brand new one from Garrett, so, and much cheaper. So we pre-lubed the bearing here on the turbo. We're gonna pre-lube it again once it gets in the bus. But right now we can do it and tip it to the left and tip it to the right, make sure we got good oil up on all those bearings inside there. turbo seal there, or it drains. So the new one, it's got a couple little dings in it and it came kind of bent. I think I've got one, a better shape one in the box. I certainly don't want that to leak. I did have another new uh, gasket in the toolbox, so we were able to use a new one and not use that messed up one. Just loosen that clamp a little bit if it's not flush. Can you shine the light under there? Make sure that o ring didn't move. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's up out of the groove. Installing the turbocharger. It is 30 to 35 foot pounds for the attaching bolts. the turbo again. This is 40 weight engine oil. Put too much in there, you'll overflow it. Okay, this is all back together. We got the coolant in. Um, we got just a little bit of coolant to still go in. We are gonna let it just kind of bleed down in there. We're not gonna be able to get them out of here until Monday because the tires didn't come in. Uh, so that everything's ready on it except for the new tires going in uh, on the front. And then we got the next Prevo just pulled in today too. We got that one there and then another Prevo over there. Prevo's everywhere. So we're waiting for Monday for the new rims and tires to be in for the front of this. One thing we didn't discuss is we said that, you know, these front tires were right at their max load. One of them may have been overloaded because we don't know if, if the bus is, you know, 300 pounds heavier on the left than the right. We're going by the total weight of the axle and assuming it's 50-50, but it's probably not. We have individual axle scales here. Individual scales will be able to weigh the bus here on Monday uh, once we get the new tires on it. And we'll know if one side's heavier than the other. But Regardless, we got to try to lose over a thousand pounds on that front axle. Um, that's that's going to be quite a challenge, but he's he's willing to try and do it. He's going to get rid of some of the stuff on the inside too, and then we'll go back to the cat scales and get the overall weight too. But once we weigh the front uh, left and front right, we'll know what the discrepancy is left and right, and it'll probably be a little bit different. 